And our co-host on the day, the New York Times best-selling author, John Gilstrap. Good morning, John. Good morning, Rob. You are solo today, bro. I am. This is part of my power grab. <laughs> I'm, I'm running everybody else out. You're moving families in. You're moving <laughs> families out. you got to make your move now. It's a new year. That's right. It's a new John Gilstrap. That's right. It's the new sheriff in town. Yeah, Matt Harvey had some uh, official work stuff today. Couldn't, couldn't do it. <laughs> Colin, <That> was, <laughs> Colin about fell out of his chair when, that was, you, when you slipped that one Yeah, in. and that was not entirely unintended. I, yeah, but but thank there you, you there is a new chair. <laughs> there, yeah, so there is. You're not incorrect with that statement, but uh, maybe the timeliness of it. Yeah, right? that was, yeah. I'll just sit here quietly. Uh, don't do that. We've got two hours to go. Uh, it will be a day uh, that features a lot of uh, people in the West Virginia economy, uh, economic outlook, and uh, uh, politics as well because of the big LG announcement yesterday. And we have with us right now Mitch Carmichael from the uh, Department of Economic Development. He is the secretary of that department. Mitch, former Senate president as well. Good to have you back on the program, sir. Well, it's great to be here. Happy New Year. And uh, we kicked it off right yesterday. (laughs) I'd say, Mitch, how long was this deal with LG in the works? Uh, let's see. The, the chairman of LG mentioned that it had been uh, in the works about a year. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we've been working on it. I thought it was a little less than that, but uh, time flies. And uh, so, yeah, we've been working with them for approximately a year. How, how is that on the timetable of how long it usually takes to land a deal at this of this size? Is that a typical amount of time? Yes, the, the uh, what I would refer to as the sales cycles are very long in these complicated transactions when there's uh, this amount of money involved in them and so forth. Even up until the last minute, there are uh, lots of different details uh, to be ironed out. But uh, it really is uh, very gratifying when you uh, conclude one of these transactions and know all the different uh, positive benefits it's going to accrue to our citizens. Well, let's talk about the specifics of it, uh, Mitch. Uh, tell me what the state gets and uh, what LG gets as part of this deal. Well, I'll tell you exactly what's committed, and then I'll tell you what's envisioned. Uh, and so uh, what is committed with this transaction is that uh, LG, which is a Fortune 200 company, 75,000 employees, $200 billion in annual revenue, uh one of the most respected companies in the world, will invest uh, over a five-year period $700 million in West Virginia and commit to 275 uh, full-time jobs in our state. Uh, Some of those jobs can be remote. Uh, I will uh, concede that fact. But of those 275 jobs, over 150 of those jobs must pay over $125,000 a year be full benefits, retirement, health care, all of that. So uh, this is uh, the next step, I believe, in the evolution of the West Virginia economy toward uh, embracing our manufacturing components, but also uh, welcoming a technology, knowledge-based uh, economic uh, package as well. Now, I noticed these locations, uh, Huntington and Morgantown, are also where the state's two biggest universities are located. Is that a coincidence, or was that specific because of the technology that they were looking to do? No, it's uh, they, they want to be associated with the university systems uh, to tap into their uh, uh, the healthcare initiative because this company will develop uh, healthcare initiatives, uh, clean technology initiatives, more efficient utilization of our natural resource and then artificial intelligence uh, components as well. So they want to tap into our uh, two major universities, and we have others that they also want to affiliate with in the Eastern Panhandle as well. So, uh, but it, I think it's uh, it's what will what they envision is clusters of employees at various locations in West Virginia that will, uh, you know, uh, provide uh, the talent and resources and skill sets that they then can all collaborate together. Uh, and bring forth these uh, products and services. And what will the state be kicking in to make all this happen again, Mitch? Yeah, there's a $54 million incentive package uh, for um, for the entire package is over a five-year period of time, so it's not, you know, up front. But it's uh, uh, from a, uh, you know, incentive versus investment and job numbers, it's a very good transaction for the citizens of West Virginia. 
What will that uh, $54 million worth of incentive entail? Is it just simply tax breaks? No, no, there are tax breaks and then uh, direct payments uh, to the company uh, for investment, you know, as it's staged in with their investments and job numbers and so forth. And there's penalties uh, on LG if they do not perform, uh, they must pay it all back. So, so um, uh, and this is, we feel really good when we put uh, these penalties in place. I, I say repayment provisions, not even penalties. Uh, they're more than willing to sign these agreements to say, yes, if we say we're going to create these jobs, we say we're going to invest this amount of money, uh, we also are going to bring other benefits to the state, and I'll elaborate on those in a moment. But if we don't do all that, we'll pay it all back. Mm -hmm. And it, we're doing, doing business with a Fortune 200 company that, uh, you know, their word is their bond. So give me an idea. You say you're going to make payments to LG, and, and that money would be used for what by LG? Well, LG will be able to utilize that to uh, create the infrastructure and the uh, uh, sort of the um, knowledge-based economy and the technology and hire the people and those kind of things. And they're, you know, we don't really tell them how to use their incentive package. We are just hold them accountable for producing the results. So, uh, you know, it's not our job to manage their business. It's just our job to make sure that uh, what uh, the results that we have been promised are delivered by LG. So, you know, uh, that's uh, it, sort of at their discretion how they use the funds at their disposal. We just want the results. And I assume that was all part of the negotiation to land LG. So was that an amount that they requested, or was that an amount that you folks offered because you felt that was necessary to close the deal? Oh, no. Th this is a negotiated process that, you know, we're in competition with uh, other states and other venues. These jobs, as you can imagine, uh, LG has 128 locations throughout the world. LG Nova that will be locating in West Virginia is primarily in Silicon Valley. These jobs would have been Silicon Valley jobs. Uh, and so West Virginia got in the game, competed very aggressively against um, you know, California and many of the other Appalachian states uh, because all, all everyone wants LG in their state. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nobody that uh, with this type of initiative and the knowledge-based economy – this is a, uh, you know, we beat the other states. This isn't like we said, hey, uh, you know, LG, you'd like to come here, here's some money. We, we were competing for these jobs, and we won. And, Mitch, th these are white-collar jobs, basically. They're not actually manufacturing products in West Virginia with this deal, correct? N not initially with this uh, incentive package, but they envision um, – uh, you know, various opportunities. I mean, as they came to West Virginia and experienced the culture and the people and the uh, working with our university systems and so forth, uh, they have been so impressed that they, you know, th this project will expand and grow beyond just this uh, initial announcement. Good morning, Mitch. This is John Gilstrap. <clears throat> I'm Thank I'm you, still John. I'm still not sure what it is that they're going to be doing i mean lg is a is an electronics company is that mm -hmm. right and yes. 700 well, million now, yeah uh, I, if i could just interject there lg's the the largest component of lg corporation is lg electronics they're also incredibly large in chemicals um, and telecommunication services and innovation research and development so is there is it their plan to build some kind of a factory in the future. I'm just trying to figure out where $700 yeah. million dollars gets gets spent. Well, okay. Uh, the what what where, where they will spend the $700 million is on an entity that is that is primarily focused around research development. If you go and I'm sure you've been to these uh, different uh, entities around the nation or around the world where there is research and uh, uh, you know, development of new products and new initiatives and so forth. Those buildings that uh, that occurs in are massive. Uh, there's lots of people involved in it, and it is, uh, you know, a knowledge-based economy. And it's so hard 
for, and I've been, I've dealt with this question over the last you know month or so when we we're talking about LG. It's so hard for many of us, me included, to get our heads around the fact that we're not putting steel in the ground and building uh, a, a product that at the end of the day we're going to put on a truck and ship somewhere. This is a research-oriented uh, development, new product initiatives, collaboration with other um, venture capital firms and so forth that that uh, bring forth and germinate new project projects and products that sort of lift that knowledge base economy up. I don't. So the it's a a manufacturing think tank for. No, it's not a manufacturing. No, it, this is uh, more initiated, or uh, the initiative is around healthcare. Uh, and you go to any healthcare facility; they're not manufacturing a product. Or, uh, you know, if you go to a Johnson and Johnson or a, you know a Pfizer or a, something like that, they're doing research and development on new product initiatives and so forth. So we're not, um, you know, eventually with those, it would uh, create products and services that could be, you know, um, commercialized and developed and so forth. And they hope that comes to fruition. But their commitment is to invest seven hundred million, a minimum of seven hundred million dollars in West Virginia to create these um, uh, initiatives that will focus on artificial intelligence. You know, I had the privilege this year, John, of going to Seattle, Washington, to Amazon and Microsoft to see what they're doing in their research labs and in their research. And there's thousands and thousands of employees doing this type of work and it's just in west virginia we haven't experienced that and so it's hard to communicate the um the the awesome nature of what can occur through those initiatives i mean, let me come at this from from a, a different direction if um how do the how does the 700 million dollars the, the investment into whatever it is that they're doing they don't fully understand yet how does that benefit the local businesses? Is that going to bring more people into shops yeah. and, and provide more housing and such? So they're building some kind of a campus? Yeah. I mean, they're going to be building, you know, pods, clusters around the state. I think one of the, the great benefits of this is, it's, yes, it's in Morgantown. It's looking to be in the eastern panhandle in Huntington and Charleston. But they're also looking to cluster in southern West Virginia and other uh, areas around uh, our state, and this can be, you know, they're interconnected through the uh, broadband system that we have uh, and are deploying. And so, you know, you don't have to be, uh, you know, in one particular location to, uh, to to be productive. And so will it benefit the local businesses? Heck, yeah, throughout the state. Anytime we have more employees earning great wages like this, uh, it benefits the local economy. So when we have these jobs, 150 plus, that have been paying 120 grand a year, is that inclusive of benefits and every, or, is, or are the benefits in addition to the 120 in salary? In addition to. Wow. Yeah. Especially in Morgantown and Huntington. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah. 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 It's uh, about three times the average um, per capita wage rate in West Virginia. Mitch, what will be the direct relationship between LG and Marshall and WVU? Will it include developing curriculum for future employees? Yes, absolutely. They are very, uh, in fact, at the meeting yesterday, at the announcement, at our head table, at our uh, dinner afterwards, uh, President Gee and President Smith were with uh, President Cho of uh, LG to talk about how uh, and it, these discussions have been ongoing, but to uh, to you know, kind of tailor a curriculum that will fit the needs of uh, of LG, then provide and LG will be providing um, you know employment opportunities for over for hundreds of engineers, uh, software engineers, and so forth that will be graduating from these uh, institutions. So, Mitch, this is a way of helping to. Stop the brain drain in West Virginia for yeah. young people. That's exactly right, Rob. This is um, – we are thrilled, I'll say, when we make an announcement about a big factory coming to our state, a manufacturing facility. You know, that's what West Virginia has been great at is heavy lifting, 
uh, metal manufacturing, uh, natural resource uh, utilization. We also need to augment our economy with this type of uh, a knowledge base uh, system uh, and ecosystem that can create the jobs and opportunities and the spinoff opportunities. We had venture capital firms there yesterday that were looking to partner with LG on some of these uh, new initiatives in healthcare and AI, and they were just so incredibly thrilled with our. Um, uh, you know, the manner in which West Virginia has presented itself to the world. And let me just say, some, you know, it, it's a team effort, obviously. The governor's done a great job in helping uh, uh, facilitate this transaction and leading the team to do this. Uh, President Smith, President Gee, uh, Chris Warner did a great job at the uh, Economic Development Authority, uh, you know, making sure that all the transaction gets through properly there and all the legal documentation. So it's just been... Uh, a great team effort. Mitch, I think that West Virginia is a great state to relocate a business in. The land is affordable. Uh, The taxes have have certainly come around to the point where this is a tax advantage state to move into compared to some of the border states around it. And uh, the people are great. Uh, There's not enough of them, uh, but the the people are great. Uh, Were all of those contributing factors in landing LG? And, And what else was on the list that made them select West Virginia as opposed to some of the other states. Okay, great question. You you uh, hit a lot of the um, you know attributes that uh, big companies look at when they're selecting a location. But at the end of the day, it really kind of does boil down to uh, you know every every state can put a, a nice package together. Every one of them can. But then it gets to be a comfort level, and uh, I'll I'll say that uh, the team that brought LG to West Virginia. Uh, worked very diligently, developed those relationships, and they see, and not only LG, uh, but the world is beginning to recognize West Virginia as a great location with so many natural advantages of location, of, uh, you know, sort of been a hidden gem, Rob, that uh, people are awakening to now and saying, hey, you know, there are needs in this state that our company can fulfill those needs um, and, and, yes, make a profit, but have a positive societal impact as well. And those are the kind of companies that we feel great about doing business with, the ones that want to, yes, make profitable money, but uh, have a positive social impact as well. And I think LG fits that bill perfectly. What will the timeline of this entire rollout be before LG is up and fully staffed, Mitch? That's a great question because uh, and it's, it's interesting because it was a negotiating point. Uh, we have traditionally done these manufacturing facilities where you know a company has to come in and build uh, you know a, a hundred or two hundred or a million square foot building, and so you don't get those jobs until later on. Uh, and we had had it in our contract that you know it's got to be uh, at the end of five years you got to have two hundred seventy five jobs. They said, well, we want to do them quicker. Uh, you know, we can bring these jobs in, these engineers. We're looking to hire them very quickly. And I don't want to speak for the company, but this uh, time frame will be very uh, – to ramp up to this full employment level will be very compressed. Uh, you know, I'm speculating it'll be less than two years. So when – going back to the $54 million in in incentives, first of all, all of this is great news for West Virginia and certainly for, for uh, Huntington and Morgantown where they could use some really good news. But the $54 million, normally we get those kinds of incentives. That is a break against real estate taxes or somehow the, tied into construction expenses or the, de, de, defraying construction expenses. In this case, the $54 million incentivizes what? Employment levels and uh, infrastructure. They, I'll say this: they can use the fifty-four million dollars at their discretion, uh, as long as they deliver those results that we uh, that they're you know required to do. And many of our uh, incentive packages do have discretionary advantages. And so you you elaborated some of the statutory credits that are in place for uh, manufacturing credits. Oh, Our entire tax code is almost written to incentivize uh, building construction-oriented projects. Right. And a lot of those statutory tax credits, you know, you get a real estate tax break or, uh, you know, employment tax break because you're manufacturing a certain number. We didn't really have a tax uh, 
incentive package to to bring forth a knowledge based economy, which the world is tra- you know if we miss that we've got to get in that game a knowledge based economy uh to augment our you know hardcore manufacturing f- business and so you know th- there's some discretionary incentives here that uh, you know some other companies wouldn't be able to take advantage of uh or I should say it a different way, LG would not be able to utilize our manufacturing tax credit code because they're not really manufacturing anything yet. Um, so how so is the, and again, I'm not casting shade on any of this, but how is this different than uh, LG investing six hundred and forty six million dollars as opposed to seven hundred million dollars with a fifty four million dollar incentive? Well, it's, uh, you know, I guess you could, you know, uh, kind of move the ch- chips around on the table in different ways and so forth. But uh, th- I'll say this, uh, there are many other states uh, competing for this transaction with even higher dollar amounts. Uh, but they wanted to do business with uh, West Virginia and uh, for a number of different reasons that I've talked about, you know, the, the relationship with uh, uh I'll say Brad Smith, uh, Gordon Gee, John Chambers, who, you know, many of us are, know John from our, his uh, CEO days at Cisco, in a native West Virginian. Uh, and when these companies see the advantages and the relationships and the opportunities in a state like this and one that they can make a difference in, a real impact, you know, LG's a massive company, yes, and if they came to any other state, people would love it. Uh, but it might be, you know, somebody wouldn't be on uh, a radio show for 45 minutes or 30 minutes talking about this, uh, you know, announcement. It's just another company in some of these other states. Here, they're a flagship new corporate citizen in our state, and they wanted to feel that. They felt that. Um, and so I think it's a great investment for West Virginia. It's it's like the anchor tenant for a knowledge-based economy that's going to bring other, uh, you know, uh, sort of spinoff companies uh, that will germinate in our state. And we can begin to make this Appalachian, you know, sort of innovation corridor with the headquarters right here in West Virginia. Mitch? Incentives are the way you have to do business in 2024 now, but obviously this is not new to 2024. It's been going on for a few years now. Is it possible to land large companies like an LG, uh, like a CMC, uh, without, or Nucor, without incentives? Because I'm not aware of any states no. that are landing these companies without incentive packages. No, no, it's not. I mean... Uh, you know, you never like to rule out something is in the realm of possible, but I, I don't see how you do it. Uh, you know, because it, 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 you know, and that's a great question because there are those purists out there uh, and that say, you know, look, this is a, uh, a you know, crony capitalism or it's, uh, uh, you know, just uh, whatever, uh, how, whatever term they want to say. <laughs> they can, you know, take their purity straight to the poorhouse because you're not going to get these transactions without putting some incentive in place. And, uh, uh, you know, West Virginia's done, a, I think, over the last several years, a fantastic job of using uh, our incentive packages to attract world class companies and create jobs and opportunities for our citizens. But I will say this once mm-hmm. you. Seed an area with a great company, for instance, Commercial Metals or uh, Nucor in the uh, western part of the state, there will be companies that because they either supply or have offtake agreements with those um, core tenant, uh, you know, anchor tenant kind of companies that can that will come here and, and locate without a major incentive package or perhaps any incentive. But those anchor tenants, uh, you're going to have to put an incentive package on the table. Mitch, uh, Brad Smith at uh, Marshall, I don't mean to give him full credit for this deal, and that's not the intention of what I'm about to ask you, but does the addition of somebody like him with his resume help make these and more of these white-collar tech deals possible in the future more more likely? Yes, yes. Uh, Brad is uh, very well connected in the uh, – you know, in the investment community and so well-respected uh, throughout uh, 
you know, the business world writ large. And uh, he's just a, you know, a fantastic individual. Uh, and I'll, uh, you know, I'll take him and put him in front of any corporate CEO. And, uh, you know, he, he makes West Virginia, all of us in West Virginia can be proud uh, to have someone like Brad Smith represent us, uh, lead Marshall University, but also help attract, you know, world class businesses to our state. Mitch, we have a great portfolio. I, I don't. I, I'm like you. I don't want to just give total credit to uh, to Brad, who, mm-hmm. but he deserves a ton of credit. But Gordon Gee, Governor Justice, uh, Senator Manchin, Senator Capso, you know, as I said, Chris Warner at the EDA. Just it's been a great group of uh, people to, you know. To sort of a team approach. Very good. Uh, appreciate your time this morning, Mitch. And uh, as always, a pleasure to have you on the program, sir. Oh, it's great. Thank you so much. It's a great announcement. And Happy New Year. We'll have more. Happy New Year to you. Uh, by the way, your successor as Senate President, Craig Blair, joins us next. Do you have a message for him? Oh, yes. Tell him thank you for all his efforts on this deal, too, because he's uh, he's been very helpful in all business transactions that we've uh, brought forth. He's been terrific. And he was at the event last night and uh, or yesterday afternoon and just did a a wonderful job and great friend, and uh, we're lucky to have him in the Senate. Thank you, Mitch. We'll talk again. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. That is Mitch Carmichael and the announcement of LG coming to West Virginia.